Welcome to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today we celebrate the memorial of Saints Andrew Kim Taigan and Paul Chong Hasang and their companions, martyrs one and all. And I'm your host, Deacon Francis Fallier. Alexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 7, verse 31 through 35. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who have been pleased to increase your adopted children in all the world, and who made the blood of the martyrs, St. Andrew Kim Taigan, and his companions, a most fruitful seed of Christians, Grant that we may be defended by their help and profit always from their example. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our gospel passage. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. All glory belongs to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children who sit in the marketplace and call to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not weep. For John the Baptist came neither eating food nor drinking wine, and you said, He is possessed by a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you said, Look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by all her children. The Gospel of the Lord. All praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel reading, according to St. Luke, Jesus criticizes the cynicism and self-contradictory attitudes of those who reject both him and John the Baptist. They have simply closed their ears and want to hear nothing and learn nothing. He compares them to like children in a, a city square calling to their playmate. We played a flute lively for you, and you wouldn't even dance. And when we played funeral music, you wouldn't even mourn. This comparison Jesus applies to John the Baptist and himself. John led a very austere life in the desert, eating, as we are told elsewhere, only locusts and wild honey. They said that he was mad and rejected him. Jesus came leading a highly hospitable and loving life, mixing with all kinds of people. They called him a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and other sinful people. He even invited a tax collector to be one of his 12 apostles. For Jesus, it was a no-win situation. You know, when people are like that, there is really nothing that can be done. Jesus concludes with the enigmatic statement, Wisdom has been proved right by all her children. Both John and Jesus could be described as children of wisdom, whose origin is God himself. Those who can see the hand of God in the lives of John and of Jesus are also children of wisdom. Those who adamantly refuse to see God are not. It's important for us not to fall into such a trap. God speaks to us in so many ways and through so many people and situations. It's very easy to find ourselves excluding firsthand the people or situations by which God is trying to reach us. We cannot expect God to speak to us in ways that we find congenial. 
He may speak to us through a saint, or he may speak to us through a sinner, we don't know, through a conservative or a liberal, through a man or a woman, a young child, or an old person, or a young person, through an educated or an illiterate person, through a local person or through a foreigner. We have at all times to be ready to listen with an unprejudiced mind and heart and unprejudiced ear to hear, to absorb, and to try to understand the message. We may not realize it, but someone, some stranger may have approached us and it could have been an angel speaking to us something for us to ponder. As usual, after our closing prayer, we read this scripture passage again. Contemplate its message over and over. Concentrate on a thought that comes to you, either through a verse or even just a small word that touches you. And ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you, how you may spiritually grow closer to Him in friendship. That's something that God deeply desires. Let us complete our divine reading with a closing prayer, and let us pray. Having contemplated your divine word and embraced the divine truths you teach us, complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in all ways. May his generous blessings fill your day with joy. Name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, if you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, and if you haven't already done so, here it comes. Please hit the subscribe button and help support our channel. (laughs) Share these links with others and pass them along to your friends and relatives as well. Hey, pass them along to those who don't like you. It might change them. God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's holy word. Pax et bonum omnibus. Peace and blessings to all.